Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 40 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about inserting, updating, and deleting data using Details View and SQL Data Source Control. So, when the web form loads within the Grid View Control, we want to display all the employee details, basically their basic information like ID, first name, and city. And then once I select an employee within the Grid View Control, for the selected employee, you know, all the details must be displayed within the Details View. And then underneath the details, I need to have these three link buttons here, edit, delete, and new. When I click on edit, you know, we should show an editing interface like this, where we can change the, you know, uh, the employee's data and then click on update, at which point it has to update that employee record within the, you know, database table, and the grid view control should refresh automatically. Okay. Similarly, if I click on delete, that record should be deleted from the table and the grid view should be refreshed. And finally, when I click on new, I should be able to enter employee, you know, a new employee information. And then this link button here should be insert. And then once I click on insert, the new employee must be added into the database table and the grid view should refresh to show that new employees record as well. Let's see how to achieve this. Obviously, let's flip to Visual Studio, drag and drop a grid view control. Let's auto format that. Let's choose brown sugar scheme. We also need a details view control, so let's drag and drop that as well. Let's auto format that. Let's choose brown trigger scheme. Now we need two SQL data source controls, so let me drag and drop two SQL data source controls. Okay, so let's configure the first SQL data source control, which is going to act as the data source for grid view one control. So configure data source, select your connection string from web.config file, click next. The table is going to be TBL employee. Now within the grid view control, we just need ID, first name and city columns. So I'm going to just select those three columns. Click next, test your query. We should get all the rows. Click finish. Now let's associate the SQL data source control with our grid view one control. And we also want to enable selection. So the link button shows as expected. All right, so we are done configuring, you know, the grid view one control. Now let's configure SQL data source two control. So select your connection string from web.config file, click next, select your table, TBL employee. Now we want all the rows, but we don't want, I mean, we want all the columns, but not all the rows. Only the selected employee record should be displayed within the grid view control, which means obviously we need to filter the rows based on the selected employee ID. So I'm going to add a where clause for this one. And I'm going to filter the employees based on the ID column. That column value should be equal to um, a value that is coming from another control on this web form. So that's why I'm going to choose the parameter source as a control. And which control is that going to be? A, the grid view control. Okay, so the ID is going to be the selected value property of grid view one. Click on add, click OK. Okay, and not only that, remember we want to enable this details view to perform insert, update, and delete as well. And to do that, we also need to generate those queries. So click on the advanced button, click make sure you check this box, generate insert, update, and delete statements, which is going to generate the insert, update, and delete statements automatically for us. So I'm going to click OK, click next. We can test our query. So if I pass in an ID of one, for example, it's going to retrieve the employee's full details, basically all the columns for that employee. So click Finish. Now we need to associate the SQL Data Source Control with our Details View Control. OK, look at that. Since we have Insert, Update, and Delete commands also generated. Look at these options. Enable inserting, enable deleting. As I check those boxes, look at what's happening within the details view control. Enable deleting. I see all those three link buttons. That's it. We're done. Now let's go ahead and run this. As you might expect, once I select an employee's record, that selected employee will be displayed within the details view, and I should be able to edit and all that. Okay, the first problem we have is we don't want this. You know, if I don't have an employee selected within the grid view control, I don't want this colored box to be displayed. And to solve that problem, we have seen how to solve this problem in the previous session. We can make use of the page pre-render event. So in page pre-render, I'm going to say if grid view one dot selected row, if that is equal to null, 
meaning we don't have any row selected within the grid view control, then we don't want to display the details view one control. So I'm going to set the visible property to false. On the other hand, if the selected row is not null, then we know a row is selected, in which case we want to turn on the visibility. So details view one dot visible is equal to true. So obviously now when we run this, we shouldn't have that problem anymore. Okay, so we don't have anything there, but once I select an employee row, you know, the selected employee is displayed within the details view control. And look at this, I can click edit, and I can change the employee details. Okay, for example, I want to change Tom to Tom1, and then update that. Look at that. For some reason, you know, the data is not refreshing within the grid view control. But let's look at the table. Select star from TBL employee. Is the name updated? Absolutely. In the table, it is updated. But the grid view control, you know, is not refreshed to show the data. So how am I going to force the grid view control to refresh the data within it? It's very simple. After I actually update, you know, click update, you know, the details view control raises an event, you know, updated event row, item updated event. So within that, we can actually rebind the data to the grid view control. So let's see how to do that. So select your details view control, go to the properties by pressing F4, click on this events icon. So we have this item updated event, double click on that to generate the event handler. All I need to do here is grid view one dot data bind. So this is going to rebind to the data. Okay. And then I'm also going to set another line here, grid view one dot select row. I'm going to call this method. I'm going to call this method and pass in a row index of minus one so that no row will be selected within the grid view control. Okay, so I'm going to run this now and let's see if it works as expected. Let's close the other tabs. So Tom is selected. Now I'm going to edit this record and I'm going to change it back to Tom from Tom one and update that. Look at that, the row is updated and it's refreshed automatically. Okay, now on the other hand, let me actually delete the row. So when I click delete button, let's see what's going to happen. So the row is deleted. Okay. And again, look at this, the grid view is not refreshed. So we need to refresh that as well. Okay. So let's do that. So go to the properties, events icon, row deleted event is raised. You know, when the row is deleted. Similarly, when we insert a row into the grid view control, item inserted event is raised. So let's generate event handlers for both of those events. So item deleted is one, and item inserted is the other event. So let's generate that. So obviously, I basically want to do the same thing. So rebind the data to the grid view control and set the selected row to minus one, meaning don't select any row within the grid view control. Okay, so with these two changes, now we should be able to, uh, you know, basically delete as well as insert a new row and the grid view should automatically refresh when that happens. Okay, so I have a row selected here. I can actually, you know, edit that as before. If I don't want to edit, I can click cancel and it returns to non-editing mode and I can delete that. Look at this, as soon as I delete the row, the grid view is refreshed and the row is gone automatically. And there is, look at this, no row is selected within the grid view control. Now, if I want to add a new employee, I click on new, look at that, I get all these fields where I can supply values. First name, let's say X, last name Y, city Z, gender A, date of birth, let's say 0101-2001, country, let's say B, salary 1-2, Let's uh, set date of joining to, you know, the same thing, maybe 01 slash 01 slash 2010 and marital status maybe M. Now if I click insert, look at that. The row is automatically inserted and the grid view is refreshed. So let's go back to the grid view control. I mean the database table. Look at that. I have the row here as expected. So we have seen how to perform an insert, update, delete, you know, using details view control, but then using SQL data source control. In our next video, we'll discuss about achieving exactly the same thing using object data source control. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.